Hey, yeah, today we're going to make um, another little bit of a treat. Not the cheapest food in the world, but when you compare it to going to a big chain burger place or chicken place, it is a lot cheaper. Um, so we're going to start by marinating off the chicken. Um, what we have here is a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground back pepper, quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika, quarter teaspoon of um, Italian seasoning, quarter teaspoon of, I've used galangal, but you can use ginger, ground ginger, quarter teaspoon of, um, I'm using baharat, which is a, a, a Middle Eastern spice, but the supermarkets, they sell something called Ras El Hanut, um, which is really just as good. Just use that. I know Tesco sell it. Um, quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, half teaspoon of salt. We're going to pop that in to the bowl. And we're going to take some nice um, local oils and put in about a tablespoon of extra virgin rapeseed oil. Now, just give that a wee stir. And that's your marinade. Look, you can go and just get a, a shop bought marinade. Don't wrong with that, they're really good. But um works out cheaper to do it yourself. So we've got a couple of breasts of chicken. What we're gonna do is cut halfway through. Just to open it out a bit. I've got on the plastic there. Let's cut this bit off. Again, just cut it in half. Remember, where the chicken stops and your fingers start, don't cut. There's a little bit of fillet there as well we use. So we'll just cover that with a bit of clean film like that. Take a mallet and we're not bashing it out so it's all flat. We're trying to get it so it's the same thickness all over so that you get a nice even cook on it. As I say, not totally flat, just even it out. That goes in your marinade. Do the other one. There we go. So that's the same thickness all over. Pop it in the marinade. Give that a nice mix. Make sure everything's coated. Now, if you want to do this the night before, that's good. But it, it's going to want at least an hour in there to get some flavour going. So that's it. That's that done. So just to add these to the marinade now, don't do these the night before. Do them about an hour before you use them. And all we're going to do is take these big field mushrooms. Portobello mushroom is much nicer, but much dearer. Okay, so we're just going to go with these. And we're just trying to, again, flatten it off so it will sit on the grill nicely. And that's that. We've got three of them. Only because there's three in a packet, but two would do. Now, if you're really nutty health conscious, you can wash these. The thing is, don't forget a mushroom is like a sponge. So if you must wash them, just take a, a damp piece of paper, towel or kitchen roll and just wipe off the dirt. Personally, I just take off any excess bits because I don't want it to fill up with water. And believe me, they're like sponges. So we're just going to put those through the marinade as well. Let some flavour start going in there with them. Pop it all in the fridge. And we'll see those in about an hour's time. Okay, other things we're going to need for the burger, sandwich, whatever you want to call it. Just some nice lettuce. Use what you want. I mean, a nice burger will work, but I think this has a bit more character and flavour to it. This is just the romaine um, lettuce. So we use some of that. Just a nice bit of tomato. That 
that's your salad done. We're going to put some onion in, but we're going to griddle the onion to get a bit of texture to it. So we're also going to need eight slices of streaky bacon. Now I've got one onion. Try and cut it around about half a centimetre, or a quarter of an inch thick, and try and leave it whole. Be careful with a knife. I don't want to get phone calls that I've cut you. And what we're going to do is just griddle that and try and keep them a little bit whole. We're also going to need some burger cheese, a little bit of mayonnaise, and your favourite barbecue sauce. Uh, we've got a couple of brioche buns as well, and then we're just about ready to start cooking in a little while. Okay, so we're going to start cooking now. And it's all about getting everything prepped to be ready. So I'm going to use, you can use a barbecue if you've got one and the weather's nice, it's really good. I'm going to just use this uh, cast iron griddle pan thing. And I'm first going to start by cooking the, uh, the bacon. I like a nice bit of texture to the bacon, get it nice and crispy. So before this griddle gets to full temperature, I'm cooking the bacon. This end of the griddle is cool, so I can cook it this and move it up there. To get a nice flat cook on it, I'm going to start using my bacon press. If you haven't got one of these, just use a, a heavy pot for the clean bottom. But just make sure everything gets pushed down nice and flat so you get an even texture. Right, now you can see how that bacon's come on nicely, that's about where I want it. So we'll move this to the back and then start the next lot going. Okay, that's the, um, the bacon done. Now you can see all of this fat and flavour on here. Don't scrape it off, it's good flavour. We're just going to get the onion, dip it in the excess fat and drag it to the middle. That way we're seasoning the onion and using the fat and oil that's already there. What we're trying to do is pick up as much with that lovely bacon flavour as we can. So we just turn these over now. I like them to be a little undercooked. You don't want a soft onion. You want to taste the bacon and onion coming through. So just give them a second or two on this side, let them soften up a bit. Now, I'm going to put these at the back. And then I'm going to put the bacon on top of them so that the flavour drips down into the on onion and also stops the bacon getting too crispy sitting on that. There we go, I hope you can see that, but that's what we've done there. Now, for the mushrooms. Just take your marinated mushrooms and pop them on. These are going to take a little while because they're, well, they're big. Um, and you're going to have to keep flipping them every couple of minutes. You're going to get a lot of water comes out of them. But just persevere, keep flipping them. Add a little bit of oil, a bit of the marinade. Just grab some over there. Keep flipping them until they're nice and cooked. These are halfway cooked now. I've just used my bacon press to give them a little squish down. So keep doing that, keep squishing them over until they're cooked. There you go, these are nice and cooked now on both sides, you can see, I've flattened them down nicely. They're going to fit inside the bun quite well. So we're going to push these towards the back, let them stay warm up there. It's time to move on to the chicken. The chicken, if you remember, the marinade already had oil in that in it, so we're just going to pop those on. Making sure that we don't touch the raw meat to the cooked ingredients. Okay, and we just cook those until they're cooked. If you're using a probe or a, uh, a meat thermometer, they need to get to 76, 77 internal core temperature. But you'll see, you just push it, you know when it's cooked. And if you're unsure, just cut it and have a look inside and see if it's raw. So we'll let those cook. Now once you turn the chicken using these times, because they've now touched raw meat, you don't want them to touch the cooked meat again. So, get a fresh pair of tongs and continue the going. 
Always try to remember your food, Sophie. Okay, we don't want to overcook these because it'll come dry. So I'm pushing. To me, they feel cooked. So that's the first indication. Now I'm going to use a, a pole. And that's saying just under. So that's, yeah, see, that's much too low. So we'll just give it another few minutes. Okay, we're now getting a reading of hovering around 80. So that's cooked, he says, 71, 73. Well, depends how far away from it you are. They're about cooked. We do another test. We take a knife and just cut in and see if it's raw. I don't know if you can see that, but that's cooked. So your chicken's cooked now. Put it to the back. We've got one last job before we start building the burgers, sandwich, whatever. We're going to toast our brioche buns in all the meat juice. So I'll turn the camera around now and we'll build our din din. Okay, so we're going to start building. Just on the bottom of the bun, a little bit of mayonnaise. There we go. Onto that, just some lettuce. Obviously, if you don't want to put the salad in, you don't have to. But it does add a nice contrast. Nice bit of lettuce there. Some nice sliced tomato. A little squish down. We have our chicken. I didn't say this was going to be easy to eat. Just said nice. On top of the chicken, we're just going to pop a little bit of barbecue sauce. And now, like so. And we're going to pop our lovely mushrooms. One on this one. And I'll put one and a half on the other one. There we go. And on to that, we're going to put a little sriracha. Onto that, we're going to pop our onions. There we go. On top of that, our bacon. Everything's better with bacon. Four on each. Do it crisscross if you want. Make it look pretty. Wallop, wallop, wallop. There you go. And then on top of that, a slice of cheese, just in case there's not enough calories already. Then on top of that, we put our toasted bun. And then I take the photograph and try and fit it in my face.